and I will sprinkle water on Joe sleeping. I'll go, and then here, this is this is what I'll do. I will wake Joe up instantly. I'll go, wake him up. Wake up, Joe. Okay? Like a few seconds, maybe. Wait a few seconds and then wake him up. Wake him up. The question is, will Joe, if I ask Joe, what did you dream about? Would he go, A, this is the first scenario. I was walking in New Jersey. I saw the clouds come out. You know, it became darker. I took out my umbrella and it started to rain slowly. But I also just called my mom, telling her to also, you know, not, you know, it's mom, it's raining. Be, you know, remember that, you know, remember the umbrella as well. And I had a, so a long story. She, he can, the person builds a long story around that. That's the first scenario. Scenario B is the following. It feels so expanded. Let's get into that. Yeah, please. Is it, I'm talking, this was like. Yeah, yeah. No, it feels a long time. Well, yeah, it's a full a, movie. That's a full movie. So just to conclude on this, the reason why you can't remember your dreams is because serotonin and norvenalin, the chemicals helping your hippocampus store them, are absent. That's the whole story. And then when you wake up, and you jolt awake, you remember your dreams because serotonin and norvenalin comes online. That's a simple story for that. Then Julian says, well, look, I felt like hours, like Inception. It feels like, you know, years. Yeah. Maybe. It turns out when you record the neurons of a rat as it's running through a maze, so it's running through a maze and you record their neurons in the in a region called the hippocampus. We talked about the memory part. You fire, neurons go drr, drr, drr. Then the, the mice are awake and you look at their neurons again and it turns out the same neurons will fire when they are awake as when they were dreaming. So, okay? So when, sorry, this is, let me get this right. The neurons of the hippocampus of the, of the mice firing a certain pattern when they're asleep and the same neurons fire when they are awake. Okay. There's a replay of neuron, neuronal firing. It's like the same, it's like this, they're doing the same thing. Okay, a mirroring. Now you go, here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the interesting part. So the, the neurons not only fire when they are awake, but they also, f they fire about 50% slower. Okay. 50% slower when they are in REM. Does that make sense? Yes. So when they are awake, they, the neurons f fire fast. When they are asleep, the neurons fire slow, about 50% slower. So this might explain why when I am sleeping on a couch and I, I'm sleeping and then I, it's, I feel like it's been two hours and I wake up and look at the clock and it's been like two minutes. It's been like two minutes. The reason for that is potentially that the neurons in my brain fired 25 to 50% slower when I was in REM. So and it's explanation. not perfect math. It doesn't mean that because it was two minutes, therefore in your brain, it's now four minutes. It could be like two hours. It's it's yeah. distorted. It's distorted. Essentially, it's because it's, it's not, the percentage isn't related to the percentage of time. It's related to the percentage of like activity. Therefore, some of that activity being reduced means that your perception is gone. Correct. And to okay. be honest, we don't really know this how this works out in humans. We have not, we don't have a real story for that. Uh, it's hard to really do these experiments in humans. We don't we can't really crack open the skull and record the neurons in the same way as we can in, we can in rats. Right. But you know, it's a it's a good indicator the fact that we know that that you know rats the neurons are slowed down by fifty percent. The same neurons sure. when they are in, in in REM. But let me tell you a different experiment that I wanted to do with Ramachandran. So Ramachandran and I wanted to do an experiment on exactly sleep on time perception in dreams, and this was a experiment. Um, we came up with, and I took it to Alan Hobson, one of the greatest dream, sleep, dream researchers of the last hundred years, not to brag or anything. I, I knew him a little bit. You know. Okay, to brag. You got clout. I got, it's, it's cool. Good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. So I took it to him. I said, look, this experiment here, what do you think about this? We have a guy, let's call him Joe. He's, Joe is sleeping. And as Joe is sleeping, I will ascertain using neural recordings, EEGs on his, in his brain. EEG is like a net like thing on the brain. You record the activity of the brain and you kind of can figure out whether a person is in REM. You, use some, you can record uh, facial muscles and all that as well to see if he's paralyzed and in REM. So you do that, you know he's in REM sleep. And once he's in REM dreaming away, the land will come in and I will sprinkle water on Joe sleeping. I'll go and then here, this is, this is what I'll do. I will wake 
Joe up instantly, I'll go, I'll wake him up. Wake up, Joe. Okay? Like a few seconds, maybe. Wait a few seconds and then wake him up. Wake him up. The question is, will Joe, if I ask Joe, what did you dream about? Would he go, A, this is the first scenario. I was walking in New Jersey. I saw the clouds come out. You know, it became darker. I took out my umbrella and it started to rain slowly. But I also just called my mom, telling her to also, you know, not, you know, it's mom, it's raining. Be, you know, remember that, you know, remember the umbrella as well. And I had a, so a long story. She, he can, the person builds a long story around that. That's the first scenario. Scenario B is the following. I wake Joe up and I ask him about his dream. And he'll go, oh, I was just walking and suddenly I was hit by a tsunami. I was just hit by a tsunami, I woke up. Okay? These are the two, these are the only two possibilities. The question is which one is correct. The first one would imply that dreams are heavily slowed down compared to real life. Because remember, I yes. put water water yeah. on him yeah. and wake up, woke him up after like, like a second, like a second or two, right? The second one, the second one he's just like, oh, I just I was uh, hit by by you know water like a tsunami mm -hmm. which one is it we don't know and this is one of the the, the huge this is a, such a simple experiment um we haven't we have we don't know the answer to this experiment but it could potentially reveal a lot of things and and my uh and hobson was excited about this uh experiment and but we haven't done it you got to do that you got to do that one right? yeah yeah where do dreams come from it's a good question what does where do dreams come from so for a long time, people thought these were messages from God and divine realms. And to be honest, we can't really exclude anything in the sense that just because we know there's a brain chemistry and there's a brain substrate to dreams, we can't for sure know if there's something coming from the outside. We can't know that. So we'll just keep that possibility open for a scientist 100 years from now. We won't go into that, but that was the belief for a long time. So where do they come from? Let's say we don't know other than we can look at the brain chemistry and the functional activity of the brain and say your dreams are a product of this mm. of this of this activity but you can go further than that and say well it's not merely the activity of the brain and the neurons firing in this bizarre synchrony that's creating the dream there's also other factor it could be things like your 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 unconscious memories of, of life and experiences. We know that the hippocampus, as I mentioned, is hyperactive in REM. So definitely you have a lot of activity of the hippocampus spilling over. And so you see yourself um, replaying some of your, your, your life experiences. In fact, dreams don't just replay real life events. They tend to be more sort of around core themes and fears and, and things you're happy with rather than just mere replay. I, Ju Julia, Julian is not merely seeing himself, you know, walking around in, in, in New Jersey and eating pizza in the deli. He's not seeing that. He's seeing more of emotionally important uh, themes and symbols. Even if they're changed from what reality is. Even though they're changed. You can think of dreams more like, dreams are more like an Indiana Jones and you are, it's an exploratory process where your brain takes these visual scenarios and throw them, throw them at, at you, at Julian, and says, look, here's Julian is in a, in, in a, in a space suit and he's walking around in Buckingham Palace, and then see how you react to that. If there's an, if you're emotionally aroused, it will say, "Oh, this is important. Let's go further down this route," and you explore it a bit more. Mm. And then it takes another scenario. Maybe it introduces a colleague that just a new colleague from work, and you see her suddenly wearing a uh, what's not Batman, the lady in Batman, the Catwoman. She becomes Catwoman, for example, or you know, bizarre, Anne something. Hathaway was a good Catwoman. <laughs> yeah. something strange and bizarre will happen and the point of all this your brain is literally exploring scenarios and testing them against against your expectations and your emotions and if it's important it'll go down that route more so that's the first that's the first element second element you can think of dreams as as a visual I'm, I'm trying to be like you now and use metaphors so it's like it's like a museum, an art museum, rather than actual verbal stuff. Meaning that it takes you and shows you these indescribable things like, like walking around an art museum and being aroused and you can't really put words on what you're seeing. It's so profoundly evocative emotionally. Go, oh my God, I'm seeing the sun and the moon bowing in front of me. 
I am seeing, you know, this 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 television splitting into a, becoming a rainbow and 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 flying off. And things are indescribable. And that's because the brain, it seems, is using more the right hemisphere, which is more the art part of the re brain. It recruits a lot of that those centers for sure, and less linguistic. It uses language. We do speak in dreams, but it's less linguistically describable. It's more of metaphorically abstract. Mm -hmm. That's a very crucial point, actually, of the whole dream experience. The fact that you have that these are uh, like that art museum metaphor, that things are visually evocative and just profound and indescribable often. But they often, you know, I'm one of these guys that likes to think about the meaning of my dreams because mm -hmm. they have these strange nonlinear parallels yeah. to things in my life with yeah. real people mm -hmm. mixed with some bizarreness, not real people as well, yeah, yeah. but the real people are in a totally different context. Yeah. But then the actions they take or you take with them in the dream explains something else that's either like something you need to do. Yeah in your life yeah. or something that's missing in your life. It's a good point. Yeah, it's almost like emotional processing. It's a way of, it's it's reminding, it's a reminder, but it's really one theory, just to go back to theory land here, but it's, it's, it's kind of what you're saying. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.